Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. June 10th, Lewis Tappan. Lewis Tappan was a man who knew what he believed and in whom he believed, and he wasn't afraid to take a stand. For instance, in 1863, he held a Christian service to celebrate Emancipation Day and the freeing of slaves in the United States. It ended in a riot, hymnals and pews flying through the air, and black citizens being beaten. Tappan escaped and settled his wife and children across town. About four nights later, in the muggy dark, a mob battered their way into Tappan's home, broke windows, and threw his furniture into the street. They piled sheets and blankets and paintings and chairs and anything they didn't want to steal onto the heap and set it all on fire. When Tappan showed up the next day and saw the damage, he said he wouldn't repair the home that summer. He'd let it stand for a summer. It would be a silent anti-slavery preacher to the crowds who will flock to see it. Today's story took place 22 years before this saga of the preaching house. In hard times, God brings us comfort so we can give it to others. Tuberculosis. Lewis Tappan listened to the diagnosis in silence. His world had been wrapped up in business, abolitionism, and social activism, and he had forgotten how short life really was. Now, his daughter had tuberculosis. Growing up, he had watched his own mother face a similar situation when one of her children became critically ill and eventually died. She had put her full faith in the goodness of God and refused to let the unexpected tragedy shake her trust in him. Now Tappan felt the same weight, a duty to love and comfort his little girl, but also to trust God fully. There was no way to know the best way to handle the situation. The doctors hadn't told 18-year-old Eliza the severity of her condition. And when Tappan tried to gently explain its seriousness, he was heartbroken to see his daughter break down into tears. He asked her, Eliza, does it distress you to hear this? She replied meekly, I hadn't thought I was so ill. And when we first hear of things, we are apt to be affected. Desperate to comfort her, Tappan did the only thing he felt he could do in that moment. He prayed with her. Weeks passed, and the condition worsened as the family doctors tried remedy after remedy. Finally, Tappan had to approach Eliza with the painful truth once again. According to the doctors, she had only five or six weeks left to live. This time, a change was obvious. Eliza took the news calmly. Revitalized by her response, Tappan encouraged her daily in prayer, reflection, and biblical reading. The outside demands on Tappan's attention and energy never went away but he refused to lose the last bit of time he had to connect with his daughter on earth. And she fought on past the six week mark into seven weeks, 10 weeks, 15 weeks more of the horrible sickness. But inevitably, the last days arrived. Tappan received no official warning, no indication of which day would be Eliza's last, but the two of them did draw closer together. One day, while Tappan sat by his daughter's bedside, she thanked him for giving her courage to face death and for telling her the truth even when the doctors had tiptoed around it. He read her some hymns to comfort her and lift her up to God and was prepared to leave until Eliza stopped him. She told him, I want to talk with you before my voice fails me. The request moved him, and he sat beside her in silence as she poured out her heart to him. The next day, she passed away. 
there was time for mourning, but Tappan ultimately found comfort in God, comfort which had helped him encourage his daughter before her death, and it helped him stay encouraged after she died. In everything, he thanked a good and merciful God who could use life and death to accomplish his all good purposes. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 4 states, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Today, can you share God's comfort with someone who is facing hard times? In hard times, God brings us comfort so we can give it to others. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.